Hi, I'm Michaela and I will talk about high quality functional association networks inferred from single cell RNA seq and proteomics data. And to begin with, physical protein interactions is the way towards understanding the process of the cells. Almost all cellular processes are mediated by physical protein protein interactions. However, Due to the experimental limitations, it's impossible to capture both all interactions and their dynamic nature. And that's why we need protein association networks. And what's the difference between protein association networks and physical protein interaction networks? The difference is that in a physical protein interaction network, links between proteins represent binding. On the other hand, in a protein association network, a link between two proteins represents that these two proteins contribute in a biological function, but without necessarily forming a complex. And that's why we have networks like the string network to tell us which proteins work together. In this example, string database offers links between proteins derived from multiple different sources, and that could be the text mining on the whole scientific literature uh, or the databases of interaction experiments and others. But what about understudied proteins? Strings associations are mostly obtained by existing knowledge. The high confidence pairs are coming either from the text mining on the scientific literature or the databases. And that means that we cannot say a lot of things about the understudied proteins, which by definition they don't have enough literature to study. So, what is the solution? What is the most unbiased set we have in our hands today to create networks that they lack the literature bias? The answer that we gave is co-expression networks from large-scale omics data. And why do we need large-scale omics data? Because they are unbiased since they are coming from uh, directly from the technology, they have nothing to do with the literature, and large-scale because we have a lot of variety and a lot of information. And to do so, we decided to use single-cell transcriptomics and proteomics data. So the single cells are coming from the Human Protein Atlas, the chapter of the single cells, and the proteomics from the Pride database in collaboration with Compomics Group from Leonard Martens and Robin Baumwester. So that gave us two very big matrices. In single cells, we have 20,000 genes and half a million of cells, while in Pride, we have 20,000 proteins and 32,000 runs. They are big, but that's not the main problem. The main problem is that they are sparse and redundant. If we go to the example of the single cells, we can think that we have genes expressed across cell types. And if a gene is not expressed across a specific cell type, that means that it's not going to be expressed in any of the cell states within the cell type. And that produces a lot of zeros in this matrix, and that makes it sparse. At the same time, cell states can be just biological replicant to each other. They can just be identical, but it's not something that we can know beforehand. So at the same time, it is redundant. Same rules apply also to the matrix that it comes from Pride database. And the solution is dimensionality reduction. When we compress the information in lower dimensions, that means that we keep only the most important information from the original input. And that means that we get rid of redundancy and duplicate the information. At the same time, compressing the information means that new calculations are happening and we get rid of zeros. So, with dimensionality reduction, we can read of sparsity and redundancy. And there are multiple ways to do dimensionality reduction and multiple methods, but in our case, we need the smart way, working also on large scale data and creating linear and nonlinear correlations. And that's why we went to variational autoencoders. In general, the variational autoencoder framework uses deep neural networks, an encoder and a decoder, to learn a representation from complex data without supervision. The main purpose of variational autoencoders is to reconstruct the input. In an ideal world, input x on the left is equal to x prime, which is the output on the right. To do so, variational autoencoders create a bottleneck, z, which is a lower representation of the input. Therefore, it keeps only the meaningful information that the decoder needs to reconstruct the original input. Extracting this bottleneck, z, we can capture the deep linear and non-linear correlations in a dimensionality reduced space. So, if you think that and the fact that is a deep neural network with a lot of correlations and a lot of interactions and a lot of hidden layers, we are talking about a smart way to do dimensionality reduction. And that's what we did. So here you can see an overview of our hypothesis and our pipeline. So the main hypothesis is that in co-expression networks 
two genes that they are functionally related tend to have similar expression patterns across conditions. And based on that, and the fact that we want large scale data, we went on the pipeline where we start with our omics, we pre-process them accordingly, we have a dimensionality reduction method, which is in our case is variational autoencoders, and then we create pairwise correlation by applying Pearson correlation coefficient. That outputs a list of protein pairs with assigned scores. So the last part is that we want to benchmark our results against the GEC database to quantify how well the predicted interactions agree with what is known. This method is called fava, it has a name and it's a Greek food for those who don't know and it's coming from fava beans as our logo on the left up corner and it is actually available as a pie, fava pie, for everyone that wants to integrate it in their pipelines. I would like to mention here that we use it in large scale omics but it's actually applicable also in individual data sets of single cell or proteomics. And the last thing that I would like to mention is that we did all this in order to be able to say something about understudied proteins. So here you can see our combined network from single cell and proteomics data, actually the network that is over 75% confidence, and I highlight with purple the understudied proteins. So you can find more information, you can download the network or you can download the FavaPi under this QR code on the right up corner that it says all about Fava and as long as you have access to this video and as long as you have access to this QR code, I will keep updating the information that dates behind this QR code. So you can find our manuscript later on and any update on this network and on Fava. So feel free to, to scan it and keep looking into it and follow us on Twitter as well. So the last thing that I would like to do is to thank my lab, Jensen Lab, and specifically Lars Jul Jensen, and also our collaborators, Pau, Pierre Alindas and Compomix Lab uh, for this um, project. The, our funding is Copenhagen Bioscience PhD program, Novo Nordisk Foundation and EMBO for short-term exchange. And finally, I would like to tell you that feel free to scan our QR code because it will keep being updated and feel free to contact me uh, if you have further questions. Thank you for your attention.